Hi, this is Luke Zip at Crocker Farm Auction, and I'm here with uh, an unbelievably exciting example of American stoneware that was recently discovered in Florida, of all places. Uh, it is just, you know, rarely do we find a piece with, uh, you know, even an incised bird, an incised flower, an incised leaf uh, that incorporates maybe a, a portion of a vessel. Uh, but here we have a six gallon stoneware water cooler with an incised scene uh, incorporating literally the whole front surface of the piece. Uh, and it's just exceptional. It was made in Baltimore uh, at the pottery of William Morgan. It's signed Morgan Maker, and I'll show you that uh, signature later. But Morgan Maker, Balt for Baltimore. It was made 1822 to 1827 at, the, uh, at their, uh, his pottery on Fayette Street. And really it is uh, just one of the best pieces of American stoneware that has surfaced in decades. Uh, it's just a beautiful scene, like I said, and uh, it, it's done in the Henry Remy style that began in Baltimore when Remy came uh, around the start of the War of 1812. There's a small handful of vessels known with incised birds that uh, are either signed by or attributed to him. William Morgan was clearly influenced by Remy, but um, he perhaps executed that Remy-style decoration even better than Remy. As you can see, uh, it is just incredibly crisp, incredibly fine. Oftentimes, um, you know, you see cobalt oxide running out of the uh, incised decoration. By incised, it, you know, if you're not a student of stoneware, it means that they literally um, took a, a needle tool and carved the decoration in the clay and then washed it over, over with the cobalt oxide. Um, you can see William Morgan uh, incised the decoration that, uh, that he can see for the front of the piece and then wash it over in cobalt, but it didn't run outside of where it was supposed to go, uh, you know, hardly at all, and he even left you know, gray space, so the veins of the leaves. Uh, the wing and the tail of the bird, the eyes of the bird, and the other bird there. Uh, the outline of the, uh, the vine here. It is just such a crisp and size decoration, beautiful. And uh, the reason why I am so passionate about Baltimore stoneware is because, first of all, such few examples have come to light that are signed. So people often don't realize how significant of a contribution Baltimore Potter has made uh, to the field of American stoneware production in the 18-teens, 1820s, uh, around when this was made. But second of all, because of the local uh, raw materials, the local Baltimore clay, some of the most beautiful stoneware ever made in this country was made in Baltimore during this period. And this water core really bears that out. Uh, William Morgan, who I'll show you his signature here, signed Morgan Maker. Uh, he was well aware of the effect that the local clay was having on stoneware that he was producing, that he was making an exceptional product unlike um, what was being made in other cities. And uh, here's an ad that I found just a few weeks ago uh, that he placed in 1820 when he was in partnership with Thomas Amos. So it was the firm Morgan and Amos at the time. M and A have the satisfaction to inform their old customers as well as all others who purchase stoneware that they have lately purchased the exclusive privilege of two pits of fine clay, which upon trial has been found to make ware which excels in beauty anything of the kind now made or perhaps ever was made in this country, out of which they intend to manufacture the most of the, their ware as long as the pits will hold out. Um, so obviously, they used that clay for this water cooler. Uh, it was produced, we know the history of it, it was made for the historic Maryland Inn in Annapolis. It was their ice water fountain that stood in their lobby for about six decades. It went to the family, uh, the, actually the grandfather of the consigner, about 1890, and then he consigned it to us, and we will include it in our July 20th, 2013 auction.